Thank you for joining me here on Set Apart Remnant Ministries. I want to go before the Father right now and thank you, thank Him for this wonderful Shabbat He has given us. Dear Most Graciously Heavenly Father, Yehovah, we come before you now. I pray for all those watching now and in the future that you would open our eyes, open our hearts, and open our ears to receive the message you have brought before us. And we ask all this in the name of Yeshua Messiah, your Son. Amen. The apostate religion is born. And it speaks words against the Most High, and it wears out the saints, the set-apart ones of the Most High. And it intends to change appointed times and law. And they are given it into its hands for a time and a times and a half a time. Daniel 7.25 And it speaks words against the Most High, and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. Historians estimated that during the Dark Ages, 538 A.D. to 1798 A.D., the Roman Catholic Church killed over 50 million people, whom they deemed heretics as whom they deemed as heretics, most of which were Christians who dared own a Bible, which the Catholic Church forbid, or proclaim the Gospel of J.C. Here are a few of the murdering sprees that the Catholic Church went on. The Medieval Inquisition, 1184 to the 1230s. St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, August 23rd and 24, 1572. The Spanish Inquisition in 1478. And there's a whole list of other uh things that, you know, other times that the Catholic Church has murdered people for not converting to their way of thinking. And it intends to change appointed times and law. All judges and city people and the craftsmen shall rest upon the venerable day of the sun. Country people, however, may freely attend to the cultivation of the fields because it is it frequently happens that no other day days are better adapted for planting the grain in the furrows or the vines in the trenches so that the advantage given by heavenly providence may not for the occasion of a short time perish that is March 7th 321 AD at the Council of Antioch in 345 A.D., Christians were banned from celebrating the Passover Seder, the ritual meal, with Jewish friends or neighbors. When the question arose concerning Most Holy Day of Easter, it was decreed by common consent to be expedient that the festival should be celebrated on the same day by all, in every place, and truly in the first place, it seemed to everyone a most unworthy thing that we should follow the custom of the Jews in celebration of this most holy solemnity who polluted wretches having ha having stained their hands with the nefarious crime are just blinded in their minds it is fit therefore that rejecting the practice of this people we should perpetuate to all future ages the celebration of this rite in a more legitimate order let us then have nothing in common with the most holy most hostile rabble of the Jews in how the church lost the way by Steve Maltz Saffron Planet 2009 let us then have nothing in common with the Jews sums up one of the key ideas behind much subsequent legislation against them, the sad state of anti-Semitism we see today. The, the body of Messiah, and it's not the body of Messiah, the church, because they're not the same, 
is full of anti-Semitism and many of them don't even recognize it because the, their religion was based on it, built on anti-Semitism. Then at the council of Laodicea in 363 to 364 AD, the biblical Sabbath was outlawed. Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Lord's day. And if they can, resting then as Christians, but if any shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be accursed from Christ. Canon 29. That information came from free.messianicbible.com. The Catholic Church, for more than 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday, the Catholic Mirror, September 1893. It is well to remind the Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, and all other Christians that the Bible does not support them anywhere in their observance of Sunday. Sunday is an institution of the Roman Catholic Church, and those who observe the day observe a commandment of the Catholic Church. Priest Bradley, in an address reported in the Elizabeth, New Jersey News on March 18, 1903, I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who can prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, no. By my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in a reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. T. Enright, CSSR, in a lecture at Hartford, Kansas, February 18, 1884. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. The Catholic Mirror, September 23, 1893. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea, A.D. 336, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Peter Geierman, The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, 2nd edition, 1910, page 50. Question, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Stephen Keenan, A Doctrinal Catechism, page 174. There is but one church on the face of the earth which has the power or claims power to make laws binding on the conscience, binding before God, binding under penalty of hell fire. For instance, the institution of Sunday. What right has any other church to keep this day? You answer by virtue of the third commandment. The papacy changed the fourth commandment and called it the third, which says, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. But Sunday is not the Sabbath. Any schoolboy knows that. 
Sunday is the first day of the week. I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who will prove by the Bible alone that Sunday is the day we are bound to keep, and no one has called for the money. It was the Holy Catholic Church that changed the day of rest from Saturday, the seventh day, to Sunday, the first day of the week. T. Enright, CSSR, in a lecture delivered in 1893. October the 31st, 1999. Representatives of the Catholic and the Lutheran churches gathered in Augsburg, Germany and signed a joint declaration on the subject of justification. And so five hundred years of arguments, misunderstandings, and sometimes wars began to give way to reconciliation and recognition of the gifts of the Holy Spirit as placed within the body of Christ. It ended. Luther's protest isn't over. The reformation he started didn't go far enough. There is an awakening happening right now in Protestantism and Catholicism that is continuing the Reformation. People by the power of the Holy Spirit are questioning what they have been taught. The term some have given this movement is deconstruction. Believers are once again questioning and contesting religious leaders. When the when the hirelings of the denominations can't adequately answer the questions, members leave to seek the real answers. But I wouldn't call this move of the Holy Spirit a reformation. We are not trying to reform the Protestant or Catholic churches. To reform something, a person or a group works within an established organization, like Luther did. Now a local assembly might leave a denomination to reform and conform to biblical teaching, but I haven't heard of an in, haven't heard of a denomination radically changing to conform to biblical teaching. No, this isn't a reformation, it's a revolution. Our eyes have been opened to the lies that Roman Christianity is built on. Here we see the uh, Mithra, the Roman sun god Sun, Roman sun god who the Catholic Church renamed J.C. I'm not going to say his name but uh, his real name is Yeshua and uh, the Catholic Church changed it to J.C. They will tell you it's you know just translated differently from the Greek and all that mess but uh, we all know that if we were to translate Yeshua into English, it would be Joshua. So, it's just another way Romans changed everything. This Roman coin and carving picture should look very familiar to Americans. This is uh, Sol Invictus Mithra, or Mithra, the sun god. That's right, the symbol for American liberty is modeled after the Roman sun god Mithra. And I read in another article that uh, the reason it was uh, modeled after the Roman sun god is the Illuminati wanted to cast this a spell over America, the Jezebel spirit. According to historians, the celebration of Mardi Gras has its roots in the pagan Roman celebration of Lupercalia. This was a February holiday and it honored the Roman god of fertility. It involved feasting, drinking, and carnal behavior. behavior. In France, the holiday became particularly popular as people feasted on foods that would be given up during the 40 days of Lent. 
meats, eggs, and milk were finished off in one day, giving the holiday its French title of Mardi Gras, which means Fat Tuesday. The legend has it that Tammuz was killed by a wild boar when he was 40 years old. Hislop points out that 40 days, a day for each year of Tammuz had lived on earth, were set aside to weep for Tammuz. In modern times, these 40 days were observed with weeping, fasting, and self-chastisement to gain anew this favor. So he would come forth from the underworld and cause spring to begin. The observance we know the the observance was known not only at Babylon but only also among the Phoenicians, Egyptians, Mexicans and for a time even among the Israelites. The Babylonian mystery religion by Ralph Edward Woodrow 1966. The people commemorated Tammuz's demise by 40-day fasting and weeping, Ezekiel 8:14, which is known as Lent. 40 days later on a Sunday they would rise early, dress in brand new white garments to face the sun as it arose. This is where buying new Easter outfits and sunrise service originated. During their worship of Tammuz, they would make the sign of the cross, the T, across their heart, and make cakes with a cross marked on them. And this is where we get the hot crossed buns. On this day, Sunday, the day of the sun god, Nimrod, Baal, Tammuz, then a consumption of a wild boar took place in retaliation for what the wild boar had done to their beloved god-man Tammuz. This is where we get the tradition of the eating Easter ham on Sunday. Tradition of the Easter ham from. Catholicism has taken this pagan, nimrodic, and Babylonian religion and made it their own just changing the names to God, Mary, and J.C. The parallels are all too obvious. Sadly, we see Protestant Christianity, which broken off, broke off from the Catholic Church, took this, this celebration and the various traditions thereof with them and still practice them today. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is to come first, and the man of lawlessness, lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction. I contend that the apostate assembly was born in the early 300s during the reign of Constantine and uh, successing emperors after that. This is a time this is a time when the true biblical faith was made illegal and as as I have shown in the previous slides originally I had started off doing a teaching on the biblical calendar and it turned into what you are watching But uh, I hope everyone sees the Roman Catholic Church. There's nothing good about it. There's Her deception is worldwide. And people need to come out of Babylon. They need to come out of Egypt. Because they are in bondage to a, the Babylonian system that is going to fall someday and in is in the process of falling today so I just want everybody to understand that we need to pray for our people that their eyes have not been opened yet to the truth that they might see the truth before it's too late
Shalom.